guys and welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel once again. We're back today once again to use Tier Maker as I'm going to rank all the coaches in the AFL for you. Just a heads up, I know not everyone likes Tier Maker and that's cool. Personally, I find them really fun and to be honest, as long as it's about actual AFL analysis, I'm very happy to do it on the True Footy YouTube channel. So as you can probably guess, in today's video, I'm gonna be ranking the coaches from top to bottom based on who I think are the best coaches, who I think are the worst and everyone in between. So let's have a look at who we've got on the list. All right, in this tier maker, as usual, we have five sections, S, A, B, C, and D. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm a bit of a tier maker novice. I have no idea what S is meant to stand for. I'm guessing it's the best. A, B, C, and D are pretty self-explanatory. So how I usually like to start this is work out what my boundaries are, uh, who is the best and who is the worst. So straight off the bat, I think I'm going to have to have Clarko up the top. Where is Clarko? Where are you, mate? Hiding. Oh my God, he was right there. Okay, so Clarko, best coach in the league. The reason being, he's won four premierships. That's pretty self-explanatory. But I think it's a sign of a good coach that after 2008, he semi-rebuilt the list. They still had the same core players, but he, he changed, obviously, in five years, a huge part of that team that won the flag. And I think if he can do that without actually having to drop out of the eight too much, I think they missed the finals maybe once. Could have been twice, but even still, the fact that they bounced back and they won a three-peat, and then after another re very quick rebuild, they uh, made the top four last year. It just it, it obviously shows he's got something good going there. I won't ramble on too much, but um, I think undoubtedly Clarko is on a level of his own. And at the other end of the spectrum, I'm sorry to do this, but I'm going to have to put Brendan Bolton there for kind of the same sort of criteria, probably the worst coaching um, performance in terms of actual wins and losses. Uh, I feel a bit bad for the guy. Teague has come in straight after him and obviously, you know, won more games in like seven games or whatever it was. I don't think it's as simple as Brendan Bolton bad, David T good, that has led to Carlton's resurgence, but I do think, you know, on all the available data we have on Bolton, you know, it doesn't look good. So let's have a look at our next tier down from Clarko. I'm going to say you'd have to look for the coaches in the AFL who have currently won premierships. Hardwick may be the second best coach on this list, I think. When you think about what Richmond were like, when Hardwick took over. You know, I think they were spoon favorites in 2010. I know they didn't win it in the end, but um, that Richmond was seriously bad. It was almost like Melbourne, Carlton, mm, yeah, Gold Coast levels at some point. For him to take them into the finals and not only into the finals for three years in a row, but then also be a premiership contender for the third year running, that is a remarkable turnaround. It probably doesn't even get talked about enough. Simo, for similar reasons, he, the Eagles weren't quite as bad as Richmond were when Simo took over, but in Wush's last year, they missed the finals. They looked a bit listless. He's only missed the finals once at the Eagles um, when they finished ninth. You could argue, obviously, they won the flag, uh, lost the grand final. You could argue the team was kind of already assembled, at least the key players, when he came over there. So maybe that's one caveat. But at the same time, he has brought in a lot of players, really brought in his own style to the Eagles as well. So... Um, I think he's absolutely one of the best coaches in the AFL. Chris Scott, similar. Some say he walked into that flag. Uh, the team kind of won the flag for him. He didn't, they didn't even need a coach. I think that's a little bit of a uh, hyperbole. But um, yeah, obviously he's a premiership coach. And not only that, but Geelong have stayed relevant that whole time. It helps that players want to play for him. But even still, the fact that they're... Well, they're top of the ladder now and could win a flag this year. So I'm definitely putting him on the same level as all those other coaches. John Longmire as well, I think, fits that category. Similar reasons to Chris Scott. The team was kind of already there when he came in. But, you know, Sydney have changed. They've refreshed the list over the years. They've always stayed relevant. This is the only down year Sydney's had. In fact, I think this is going to be the first time they've missed the finals in 10 years. Yeah, Longmire is obviously a very, very good coach. I think it's time to look at the next tier down and someone like Luke Beveridge comes to mind. He's won a premiership for sure, but he doesn't quite have the same performance record as these other coaches here. I do love the doggies. I think they, um, I think they have so much talent and you could probably argue they underachieved for what, especially in the midfield, the talent they have. Uh, that's why I don't have Beveridge quite that high up, but I do think he will win another flag at the Bulldogs sometime in the next few years. Bucks uh, goes to B purely because, yes, they did make the grand final last year, and I think he is a good coach. People forget for years before that he was the king of mediocrity there, or at least that was, that was the perception on the outside. Had he won the flag, I might have put him a little higher, but because he still hasn't won one, sorry, I'm just going to put him B alongside Beveridge. Wisher as well is a tough one to gauge because uh, had a great record with the Eagles, took them to that premiership year. I don't think the Eagles carried him 
because the flag is... I feel like some people have said that before because of that midfield they had, but that team wasn't that well balanced anyway. It was very midfield and defense heavy. But anyway, uh, Wush has won a premiership. It's too early to call exactly how he's going to go at Essendon because they look good sometimes and then look absolutely pathetic like in the last fortnight. For as long as that's going to keep happening, I'm a little bit concerned by that. That's why I have him slightly below those other coaches. I feel like Brad Scott's a good one to put in that C column. I do think he performed fairly well at North Melbourne despite never having a super talented list. I think he's a decent coach. I guess because they never really went deep into finals. They finished eighth in 2015 and made a prelim, but still finished eighth. So I think because of that, I'm just going to put him in that C column. He's a decent coach. Richo, I'm going to have to put in the D column as well. It's a little bit harsh because he he had bad injury luck while he was there, but he was there for a long time and they went backwards after. I think, what was it, 20... Was it 2017 they finished ninth? Or one year they finished ninth and then they've gone backwards since. So overall, a little bit of an uninspiring stint from Richo, but I don't think he had maybe the resources of the other clubs. So Stewie Jew, chucking the C column. I think I think he's doing a good thing at Gold Coast. I think people forget how rough it would be to coach Gold Coast. Uh, I think he's doing a good job. The players at the moment look a little bit cooked. They're playing a physically demanding style, playing very defensive, tackle-heavy style. Uh, it's not sustainable for a young team, so... I like what he's doing there, and I'm hoping he can build a culture that is pretty strong over there because they bloody need it. Ross Lyon, I'm going to put in B. The only reason he doesn't go in A is because he doesn't want a flag. Um, made two grand finals, three if you include the draw. Uh, has one of the best winning percentages in the league still, despite having a rebuild at Fremantle. So that's pretty impressive. You can't deny that. Is he the right man at Frio right now? I think that really comes down to whether the players want to play for him. Yes, the players all did talk him up after the Geelong win, but you know when they had several weeks where they just weren't putting in any effort, the coach is responsible for that, in my opinion. Fags goes to B as well, uh, purely because of the rebuild at Brisbane. They've, he's absolutely turned that club around. It wasn't just him. If it was, he'd be an A, but um, obviously, like it, it would be a, a team effort. But you can't you can't turn around Brisbane like they have without a good coach at the helm. So if they win the flag this year, you'd bloody chuck him in A because that would be a ridiculous effort and a ridiculous rebuild. But for now, just a B because we haven't quite seen enough. Don Pike is a tough one. I do think he's a good coach, actually. That's It's a really tough one to assess this one. I'm going to put him in B. He hasn't won a flag. He made a grand final. They get pumped. And then the ass kind of fell out of Adelaide in 2018. With, uh, after that camp and their injuries and now this year they're still kind of average but he was a positive influence when he was there at West Coast apparently has a good record at Adelaide generally it'll be interesting to see what he does from here but for now I think that is the right category for him I think he is a good coach Leon Cameron goes in the same boat hard to assess he's been at a club that's established well he took over Sheedy fairly early I guess we kind of rebuilt it but he went with the talent resources that, that GWS have it's it's hard to put him too much higher I think he's decent Ken Hinckley you got to put in the C column probably because Port are a little bit mediocre so to say that sorry to the pair if you're, you're watching this but I think what I mean by that is they've, they've had the talent and they've never really lifted into the top half of the ladder too often I think they came fifth in 2017 and have kind of just slumped back a little bit since they'll probably make the finals this year but I think there are a lot of Port fans out there who think that they've wasted a top four list on talent whether that's true, I'm not too sure, but I think he's a decent coach, kind of like that Brad Scott level, and probably just doesn't have the legacy that even even the coaches in the next tier above him have. Good win. Got to give him a C. I was pumping up his tyres last year after uh, Melbourne made the prelim, and I thought, you know, Paul Roos is getting a lot of credit. The actual coach at the helm should be getting a lot of the credit for turning the club around, but this year it has been an absolute disaster for Melbourne, and bizarrely like he finds himself under a lot of pressure going into next year in my opinion if they don't improve into maybe 10th and higher then I reckon Goodwin's probably cooked so it is too early to see because he's had such a bizarre start to his career now we're into the three caretaker coaches and I left them to the last because I didn't really want to touch them because they're a bit of a boring sort of thing a brats rats is the one with the runs on the boards uh runs on the board rather he was decent at Carlton and he seems to be going okay at St Kilda um, Carlton probably never finished their rebuild, in my opinion, when they got Judd in the mid to late 2000s. And their recruitment and list management has probably left a little bit to be desired. And to be fair to, to Rats, the ass fell out of the club after he left, so I think there might be something in that. But I just don't have I don't have enough to give him anything higher. You know, he's not he's not on the Wusher level, for instance. Ray Shaw, give him a C. Look, just purely because I haven't seen enough, to be honest. Yes, North improved after he took over, but 
Personally, I think North are playing now how they should have all year and it's their own fault that they didn't play that well in the first half of the year. I could be wrong. He could be pulling some massive strings, but to me, this they're doing what they should. And I record this just after they kicked one goal against Geelong, so. David Teague, controversial, but I'm gonna put him in C. Again, we haven't seen enough. I'm not gonna put him on the same level as, you know, Fagan, Lyon, Wusher, Bucks, Beveridge. You just can't, you just haven't seen enough. That being said, from the sounds of it, he should have a job at Carlton next year, I'm thinking. If the players are getting around him as much as they are, they're obviously playing with a lot of spirit right now. Um, yeah, I, I'm convinced. I'd be happy for him to get the job, but yeah, obviously, he's coached, what, a month and a half of footy? I can't put him any higher than that. So, that's it, guys. Um, if you like or disagree with my rankings, let us know in the comments. I'm sure you will disagree. It's unlikely that everyone's going to agree on the exact rankings, but I am pretty happy with that. As I always say, guys, if you have any cool things like this you want me to do or any sparkles or anything like that, just uh, let me know either in the comments or Instagram or something like that, and I will do them on the channel depending on exactly what the topic is. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you give us a like. If you haven't subscribed already, make sure you do so. We're coming up into the hot part of the AFL season, so there will be plenty of actual footy videos coming up as well. So thanks, guys. I'll see you next time on the True Footy YouTube channel.